My name's Chris. Welcome to Solaris Kit. Today, we're going to look at the full installation of the Solaris Kit solar hot water system. We will look at the positioning and the connections of the collectors, the pump station with integrated controller. We will look at filling and commissioning of the system. This video is being put together for competent, trained installers for your local area. Uh, let's have a look at how to do it. Your Solaris kit solar hot water system will be delivered on a pallet similar to this. Uh, it will come with all the components you need. You will have a delivery of a pump station in a box like this, a box full of fittings and connectors, a coil of pipe, some antifreeze, which will be used for different countries. You will have a cylinder, maybe different sizes, but generally this is what it'll, it'll look like. You will get your collectors from Solaris Kit. Certain systems will have different amounts, but generally this is how the delivery will come. Solaris Kit have developed the world's first flat packable solar thermal collector. Firstly, we need to look at how to build. Please do that by watching online the self-assembly guide on how to build your collector. Now that you've assembled your collectors, we need to look at the positioning. They need to be installed on a flat surface, on a roof or on the ground. They need to be positioned where there's limited shading from trees, any other parts of the, the, the area that could restrict sunlight. The configuration of the collectors is a maximum of three to four in series. We can have multiple rows, but three to four in each series. The connections between the solar thermal collectors, the outlet on the first collector comes down and joins into the second collector at the bottom with the use of a, a 12 mil fitting that's supplied with each kit. Then to a maximum of three to four can be connected in series. For a standard system, we would have two rows split with the pipework uh, on the flow. The flow would split at the first T, the pipework then joining in to the first connections on each row. The flow of the, will pick up the heat coming through the collectors to the outlets. The pipework will then come in the return splitting and joining all the systems back up all the way back to the pump station. A standard Solaris kit solar system uses 15 mil barrier pipe. Uh, let's have a look at the connections. Uh, the 15 mil pipe is very easily uh, cut. If we just set the, the pipe work down, the use of standard pipe cutters for plastic pipe. Now, making the, the joint on the 15 mil pipe, make sure it's nice and square. Just a nice small cut. Now, we supply in the kit the inserts. So the inserts just push in to each end of the pipe. And now, just make sure on the, the push fit fitting that the, the gap, so the, the part of the fitting is open, it just pushes in, push in, you'll hear a click, that's it going past. Now just simply turn and lock, that's the pipe now joined. The second pipe just pushed in till it clicks, tighten the fitting, and that is how to make a, a joint on the push fit fitting system. Most standard solar thermal systems will use around 15 elbows and three equal T's in total. The number of fittings will depend on the size and the number of collectors. With the collectors installed, it's time to look at the connections of the pump station. We supply a pump station that comes with an integrated solar controller. Let's have a look at all the other components within the pump station. 
We'll just take off the front part of the insulation. The controller just opens similar to a door, just to open up all our components. We have a pump, we have pressure and temperature gauges, a safety valve, aeration point, and a flow restrictor. We have flow and return connections for the collector system, which run all the way to the collectors. We have flow and return off the bottom for connections onto the cylinder. Now, quite a simple installation. Fix it to the wall. Height doesn't matter too much, but secure it to the wall with two screws and you're ready to connect it up. So these two connections are for filling and flushing. These four connections, two at the top, two at the bottom, they are three quarter thread connections to 15 mil compression. They will need some sealant by uh, a thread tape um, just to seal into the body of the, the pump station. From, from there, we'll look at the, the cylinder. There's two connections, flow and return onto the coil that will then heat the, the volume of water stored inside. Uh, they, they connect in with push fit fittings into a compression joint. Now the pipework's been installed, it's time to insulate as much of pipework as we possibly can with the insulation supplied in your kit. This will allow you to reduce heat loss. We can now look at the temperature controls for this system. We supply in the kit two temperature probes. One will go at the last collector of one of the, the rows. The other one will go in the cylinder. Now, the T that we need to install, we need to install it just as the pipe comes out the top of the last collector. We will take the probe connector and the stem, the brass stem connector and make a joint, thread tape on that one as well. And you'll notice that it has a hole at the end. This will just let the liquid in and then we'll be able to pick up the temperature. Now, it's very simply installed. We'll just slide it into the T, just tighten that up again, just to make sure that that's not going to come out. We take our black cabled temperature probe. This one is for the collectors, the black cable. So we slide this in, just past the seal until the thread connects and just tighten, tighten that on, just finger tight, just to stop it coming out and it'll just make a seal. And that will allow the temperature in, in the collector to tell the system that it's ready to turn on. We have the second one, which is installed into a probe pocket inside the cylinder. This goes between the coil, so it, usually it's positioned in the center just to pick up the temperature coming from the collectors and insert it into the, the pocket. Normally in between the coil connections and just fit that in secure so it doesn't fall out. Now that's ready to be used. Now we're ready to flush and fill the solar system. Um, using a flushing pump station, we will need to connect the hoses. So easiest way to, to look at it is take the bottom connection uh, hose off the pump and connect to the top connection on the pump station. So that's from bottom to top and for the, off the top of the tank, this connection goes on to the bottom connection of the pump station. So just make sure these are, are tightened on. Now, before opening or turning uh, any power on, anything like that, we need to make sure the pump station uh, has been isolated and some parts open. So we, we could look at that just now. There's two isolation valves. These need turned 90 degrees, which is switching these two off. Now, there's a slot here which is on top of the flow regulation valve. 
Now, we need to turn this to the left, so just to point at S, and that's going to allow us to flush the system. So before we turn the power on, we can just open up the valves connected to the hose, and we can then have the flush station filled up with any antifreeze that you need to use. Now, turning the power on to this would then allow the liquid to push through the top, flow through the collectors, back, back into the tank, which will then release any air bubbles that are in the system. And we need to run that through for at least 10 to 15 minutes or until no bubbles can be seen inside the tank. So just let it run as long as you can. And then what we can do is, once we're happy that we have released all the air, we can switch it off. Now, we need to do it in a certain technique. We need to do it very, very quickly. We need to open the flow valve back up, shut the return to the tank, open the isolation valves, now, what will happen here, we've opened up to the whole system. We will then have no return flow back to the tank. So the pressure will start building. And once we get to about one, one and a half bar, we would isolate the top connection from the pump. We would need to quickly take any air from the, the valve that will allow us to release air pressure so let that release any air and then go to the pump turn this back off isolate it underneath and that is now the system charged and ready to use now let's look at the connections of the thermistors for controlling the temperature between the collectors and the cylinder now for this we need to take the front panel off. Now make sure before taking this off the power is disconnected. On this unit it's a, just a plug so it just needs unplugged. So when you take the cover off we will see a row of connections. Uh, the temperature sensors S1 to S4. We only need S1 and S2. We've only got a sensor at the cylinder and the collector. So we can take the black connector uh, cable and with the connections at S1, we just need a, a, little, a little screwdriver just to open the connections up. So it's a case of just pushing the little orange release and inserting the cable and just make sure, give it a little pull and make sure that that stays in. And then connect the second one for S1 for the collector. It can be quite fidgety, but so you just need to make sure that they're, they're nice and tight. And just give that a little pull again. So. That's the black cable for the collectors. So just make sure that, that they're in, in the right connections. Now taking the gray connector, uh, the gray cable. Now we go into S2, which is the next, the next holes. So it's a case of Taking that and pushing that into, into there. Again, it's just quite a fidgety job. So make sure that's nice and tight. And with the last, last one, just stick that in. So now the, the temperature sensors are all wired in, we can put the cover on before turning the power on. Now just make sure that is nice and secure. Now that's the controller ready to 
turn the power on and using the, the manual supplied, any sp specific settings can be set up ready for use. Now that's the system fully installed. Now we're ready to turn the sun's energy into hot water. <laughs>